So in the last episode, we looked at using the onURL change function to update our model to know which route the user is on at all times. And today we're going to use that to know which view function to be able to render. So right now we're rendering always our index view, but we need to change this based on the current route. I'm going to create a function in the view module that will help us do this. I'm going to call it view.render for root, and it will take the model. Let's get rid of that to do. So let's load up view. We're also going to need to deal with the routing module in here because we're going to need to look at the current uh, route. So we'll import the root uh, variant and all its constructors. So we've got our header here. Let's go below and we've got our view following users. Let's put it just in here for now. So we're going to call it render for root and it's going to take a model and return HTML of type message. This is effectively just going to be a big case statement. So we're going to take the model and we're going to say case model dot current root of if it's the index root, we're going to call view.index on the model. Uh, and currently we don't have any others, so the other ones we have are sign in. This is actually just currently just always rendering nothing. We don't necessarily need to do anything here because when we sign user in, we redirect them to the home page. But let's cover it. So we'll say sign in, and we're just going to say, uh, let's say view.nothing, which is a function we'll define. And I'm going to do this again for sign out. Uh, sign out doesn't have any additional arguments. And there's one more which is not found. And again, for now we'll do view.nothing, but in the future we're gonna have an actual 404 page. So let's quickly define nothing. Whoops, HTML message, and nothing is just text empty string, which is how in Elm you, you tell it that you don't want to render anything. Uh, we actually don't need to call this view.nothing, we can just call uh, this nothing. And view.index we can call index as well because it's just uh, down here. In our view now we now don't need to expose index because we're dealing with that in here so we're going to say header and render for root. So here we are let's hit sign in. We get taken to our back end and now we're actually not seeing anything because we're actually not redirecting the user through to the index page which I thought we were. Uh, so this, this has exposed a little bug. So let's go and actually just quickly update the sign in so we redirect the user once they're signed in. So we'll do that in our init function. We're grabbing the token here if we're on the sign in URL. And we have a bunch of commands. If we got the token, we'll send it to storage. We're gonna fetch their user. And then let's also do navigation.push URL slash. And what's the error we're getting there? This push URL call produces string to command message, but all the previous elements in the list are command message. Uh, and this is because we need, the, uh, we need to pass the navigation key, which we have in this function just as key. Let's go and check that's working correctly. So I'm going to sign out, then I'll sign in again. And now you can see we get redirected through, I'm logged in as Jack Franklin and there's Jenna Smith, who's a people I follow. While we're dealing with routing in this video, I also don't like that now we're, we're still having to call navigation.push URL with an actual string. So we've already got this in a couple of places in here. You can see there we're hitting slash, here we're hitting slash as well. And as our app grows, we're going to end up with lots of these where we're not doing slash, we're doing slash sign out or we're doing slash feed or slash settings. And what that means is it's going to be really hard to, to update those URLs. Let's say we have slash settings and we use that in a bunch of places and suddenly we decide to change it. We're going to have to find this string every single time. What I'd like to do in this situation is define a function that we can call called routing.pushurl. And it will take the key because they, they always have to take the key. And then we'll actually give it the root we want to take the user to. So here I might say push URL to the index root. And that way, if we later decide that the index root URL can change, we can change it in just this push URL function that's on our routing module. So let's go and see how we might implement that. So back into my routing, we're going to need to import browser.navigation. And I'm going to do the as navigation trick to save typing. And we're going to say push URL. And it's going to take one of these keys. Uh, so let's expose that, exposing key. And it will then take a root and it will produce a command of type message. And what we're going to say in here is navigation.pushurl key and then we need to turn, convert the root into an actual string. And again, we can do this with a case statement, also case root of. And if it's the index root, then we know we want slash. If it's sign in uh, with some string token, not that I actually ever expect to be sending the user here, but we should probably support this case. Then it'll be slash sign in, uh, slash followed by the string. If it's the sign out route, it will just be slash sign out. 
Uh, and if it's the not found root, it'd be a bit weird to send users there, but let's just send them to, let's say, slash uh, 404. So I can say here now, let URL equals, I have that big case statement, and we'll say in navigation.pushurl key URL. And what have I done here? Uh, I think this is just my formatting confusing it. If I bump it onto a separate line, there we go, that's getting better. And now we're getting an error here on this string. And of course, I've just realized what the error is here. We don't need commas at the end of the line because it's not, uh, it's not JavaScript, so let's save that. Okay, and that's formatted correctly. Uh, it's saying that it can't find the message type. We need to import types exposing dot dot. Great, so now we have a function that can take a root and return the URL that we can render it to. So let's go and find all the places in our code where we've used navigation.pushurl. And let's go through them manually. So there's only two actually in main.elm. So here we're pushing the user to the index page. So let's change that to routing.pushurl key uh, index. Get rid of that call. And then down here in main.elm, we're pushing them to the index page when we sign them out too. So we're going to say routing.pushurl uh, model.navigation key index. Great. And let's close this find here. And what I'm also going to do is just skim through the code and look for anywhere else where the actual string URLs appear. We now shouldn't have them anywhere in here. And we don't, which is really nice. We still need to come back and refactor this uh, followed user logic at the moment. So we do have the URL strings duplicated a little bit in routing.elm because push URL has them defined here. And then the parser actually has some of them defined here too. But on the whole, this is now much clearer. We've, we've really pulled together our types and the URL strings. And if we use the types for our application, we can make sure that we always send the user to the right URL. And if we decide, say, to update sign up to say log out, we can just do it in one place down here. So if I come back to the browser now, though, we have a problem. We've got an import cycle. Routing is importing types, which is importing routing. So if we look at the code, we can see here that we're importing types in our routing module. But in our types module, we're also importing the routing module so we can get this root down here. This really is a side effect of us having this root type, not in the types file, but in the routing file, which does make sense. The roots do really belong here. So the easiest way to do this is just to ensure that we have this root type in our actual types file. So let's delete it from here and put it in there and hit save there and save that. There are other ways to solve this and reconsider how we're defining our application. But for now, this is the easiest thing to just get us going again. And it's not the end of the world to me that the actual root type is defined in our types file. And I've somehow managed to uh, paste it twice. And finally, we also need to make sure that routing exposes the push URL function. So I go back to the browser, I still have the error. Uh, and I've still got the error here because I haven't actually updated the import in our types file. So types now is importing uh, routing and exposing root, but we're not actually, uh, we don't need to do that because the type is defined here. So let's delete that. And now all our exposing looks okay. We're not importing the routing module, so we shouldn't have a circular dependency anymore. Okay, and now we're getting some errors in routing.elm that we cannot find a root type. And we can solve that from here. Uh, we are importing the types, and this is the usual problem where I've forgotten the exposing. So let's swap it back to dot dot. Let it join it. I'm also going to see if it will uh, put this over multiple lines if I hit enter there. And that looks a bit better. This is me really struggling to code today. We don't have this root type here. We've moved it out, so we can just get rid of it in the exposing. And we need to now go for anywhere where we're importing that root type and update it. So in our view, we're importing it here, but we can get rid of that because it's now coming from types. In our main as well, we're doing that. Uh, and we still need routing, but we don't need to expose the root now. And finally, after all that faffing, we are now back to a working application. So we'll leave it there. In the next episode, we're going to go back to our followed users and the logic we wrote in our update function as we fetch those users and look at refactoring that out. But although that was a little bit faffy at the end there, just to figure out all the final bits I'd missed, we are now in a much better position with the routing uh, code and the routing push URL function we've written being a much better way to direct users around the site rather than relying on uh, actually passing string URLs all over the place.